Thank you. Well, it's uh, typically I'm on the other end where I get asked uh, uh, the questions and uh, share my responses. But today we're going to switch roles, and I would like to invite uh, my partner on stage, Dafina Toncheva from uh, US Venture Partners, a good friend. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about some things which we hope are relevant for everybody. Hi, Duffy. So Please. I'll sit Any next preference? To you. Okay. So thanks again for uh, taking the time to fly over from the US uh, uh, for the Digital K event. Uh, you've been consistently rated as one of the best speakers and most sought after people. So it's glad to have you here again. Um, today, I was uh, hoping that uh, we could cover some uh, topics that I see are very important recurring in my conversations with uh, entrepreneurs uh, and to get your perspective uh, things on uh, like when is the right time to uh, try to go to the states what are the things you should be doing you should not be doing uh, how to uh, pick investors and the different types of investors and how you uh, make a selection how you do your diligence because it sure. works both ways uh, one of the things that uh, was interesting for me and I want to take a second to just thank everybody for okay. being here. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for being here. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me. And uh, uh, I'd like to thank Sean here for making it possible. Um, it's really a pleasure. I, uh, I'm so proud of, of all of you for being here, for trying to start companies, for trying to make a difference. And it's really a pleasure to be part of it, to help in any way I can. Uh, one of the most stimulating things for me has been the conversations we've had offline, the good questions that have been asked, the, the, the dreams that have been shared with me. So thank you so much for having me. It really is one of the highlights for me, one of the highlights of the year for me. So thank you. Yeah, getting back to the <laughs> questions in our 20 minutes. Uh, I want to start with uh, a question. What's the life of a growth VC? Uh, of an investor working for a growth PC. How, how does your day go by? What mm -hmm. do you do? What do you look for in the investments you make just to, sure. to kick off? Um, well, uh, I, I guess uh, I, I am uh, representing a growth VC from the perspective of, uh, of the entrepreneurs here. However, in the States, uh, we're still considered an early stage venture firm. We invest in Series A and Series B companies. We lead rounds uh, between 5 and 10 million in size. Uh, we take board seats. Uh, we are usually the first or second institutional investor in the companies that we uh, back. So uh, about 50% of my time is spent uh, on portfolio companies. Uh, since we invest in early stage companies, there are a lot of things we can help with. We help with recruiting. We help with strategy. We help with customer introductions product uh, strategy, product uh, development, uh, and mostly as a sounding board and the partners to the CEO and the management team. The other 50% of my time is spent looking for new investments and uh, also talking to my bosses, to our investors, and making sure that those who invest in USVP are happy with our performance. Uh, a long time ago, one of my professors in college said that everybody has a boss, and if you don't think you have a boss, you need to figure it out because you're most likely wrong, and you're just in the dark. So it's always important that we all know who our bosses are. Uh, we know our LPs are our bosses, our, the CEOs we back are our bosses too, so we are keeping them happy. Is your, is your fund looking towards this part of the, of the world? Because one of the questions uh, that's uh, pretty prevalent in the community here is when is the right time to go to the U.S. and what I should be doing, how I should be thinking uh, about this. Uh, our fund is uh, 300 million in size and uh, with such a size, uh, we have to be more focused. For us, that means uh, a geography focus as well as uh, a market focus. We invest primarily in the United States. We make select investments in Israel, so that's the closest we get to Bulgaria <laughs> is Israel. Uh, and uh, um, uh, we invest in enterprise software primarily. 
security uh, and on uh, the healthcare side, we invest in uh, biotech and healthcare IT. So unfortunately, USVP does not invest in companies in Europe. Um, and that would include obviously Bulgaria as well. However, there are a um, uh, sufficient number, I believe, of uh, large institutional investors that uh, uh, try to have a, a reach here that uh, follow companies in Eastern Europe. Um, and I think the second part of your question was, when was the right time? Yeah, when's the right time? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, um, uh, and I mentioned this yesterday for those of you who are in the uh, part of the, the Q&A workshop, uh, the right time to, to start, well, the right time to start talking to investors is now today. Uh, it's a long-term relationship, you have to start building it, uh, especially since it's a relationship that is built on trust, familiarity. Um, uh, the, the sooner you start, the better. That being said, uh, the right time when investors will make the decision to invest in a European company or in a company in Bulgaria would be when there is substantial growth. Uh, and the reason is the geography, the geographical distance uh, is uh, so, so large, uh, so big that uh, many investors, institutional investors in particular, uh, would like to see the company and the opportunity being de-risked. And the way we de-risk opportunities is when uh, there are more customers, the, the business is gaining significant traction. Significant traction for us means 10 million plus, I would say. Yeah. You mentioned something. Would you, would you agree with that? I mean, you went through that process raising capital from U.S. investors. Yeah. Well, in our case, it was a little bit different because the U.S. was our major market from day one, more or less, and most people saw us as a U.S. company, including investors. They later found out that we're incorporated in Bulgaria, uh, which is this tiny country that they didn't know existed on the map. But uh, we had built the reputation and they knew us as a successful company on the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. So that more or less made it easy to have those conversations. Um, you mentioned something interesting uh, with regards to how uh, the relationship with investors uh, works. Uh, one of the misconceptions I see is that people look at investors like a vending machine. I go there, I give a presentation, I deliver a pitch, I get a check, and in reality it doesn't work that way. Uh, you have uh, to invest a lot of time, you know, uh, find the best way to first get introduced to the investors, build upon that, yeah. show trust, uh, and then even after you get the check, continue investing in that relationship. So it would be good to share your thoughts on how you build a relationship with a VC. How long did it take you to raise your first institutional round from some adventures? Just curious. It, it was just a few months plus a few, like six, seven months of grueling due diligence, but that doesn't count. <laughs> the, the soft commitment was quick. Uh, well, in, you know, it's interesting, the soft commitment, uh, it, that's exactly what it is. It's a soft commitment. Uh, it's usually a non-binding commitment, right? Uh, so between the time you start talking to them and the time the, the money was wired, which is really the only point in the process that counts yeah. is when you get the check. It was a, f a few months, almost a year, it sounds yeah, like, almost right? almost a year. Almost a year, exactly. Uh, I, I think um, uh, usually in the United States, at least, uh, it takes about three months. When we work with the CEOs who are looking for uh, financing after we have invested in, in them and we're already working with them, we usually ask them to uh, plan for three to six months. That being said, as Vasco pointed out, it's, it is really important to start building relationships early, identify the investors that you think are a good fit, and for those that are, uh, cast a wide net uh, and uh, uh, talk to investors, uh, introduce yourself, your business, start giving them frequent updates to the extent that uh, um, you know that's possible, and uh, make sure that they understand what you're doing and how your business is growing and developing. In a way, you're helping them uh, start working on their due diligence without them really doing much of the work yet. Uh, and that really helps at the time when you're ready to raise, because hopefully by then, um, you have at least one or two investors that are in your preferred group of investors who have shown interest, who are 
uh, ready and willing to engage with you in a due diligence process, which as you said, the legal part of which alone can take a couple of months, um, maybe even longer if uh, you're an entity outside of the United States. So the sooner you start, the better, and you learn a lot in the process. Not only do they learn as investors, but you learn a lot about them. You get to know them as individuals, and I really strongly believe that uh, personal chemistry is one of the most important factors, uh, even though um, maybe many people won't admit it, but it is one of the most important factors. All other things equal uh, that, that that leads to an investment decision. You also get to know how they think, what their communication style is, um, how they um, uh, act in different scenarios. Uh, I think that's really important for you uh, as, as you want to make the right decision to partner with someone for a really long period of time. Uh, given that companies on average are, uh, it takes about 10 years to uh, to exit, think of it as a 10 year long relationship that, that is very frequent in interactions. So uh, you, you have to like the person that uh, is on the other side, especially when times are tough. Yeah, and one of the one of the places where things get tough is the boardroom, especially for more mature companies. So, could you give some advice to companies about uh, the first the role of the board? Because uh, I've spoken to a lot of people, I've invested in a lot of companies, and I don't think people really understand what the role of the board is. That it's not this group of people who go for whining and dining, have a good time, agree to everything, and then. Uh, uh, move away to something else that it can be this way, but it can also be structured and done in a very different way where it works for the company. Yeah. So, so the board has an important role to play. It's the governance body and the uh, organization. It's the one that represents the um, uh, interests of the shareholders. So the board makes sure that um, uh, it, uh, uh, that uh, the company meets, uh, it always acts in the best interest of all shareholders. Uh, the board has fiduciary responsibilities, usually the legal counsel of the company, and it's a frequently um, uh, uh, a frequent mistake founders make. The, the legal counsel does not report to the CEO. The legal counsel reports to the board uh, because the legal counsel makes sure that the fiduciary responsibilities uh, are, are met, that everything is within the rules, the boundaries and the rules of the, uh, of, of the market, um, of the law. Um, and uh, the, the board, so, so uh, on a, on a f the frequently, uh, uh, so a couple of things. First of all, for small companies, boards meet more often. That's another uh, thing that people find um, surprising at times. Boards can meet on a monthly basis. For companies that are uh, bigger and uh, uh, growing and uh, there, there are less um, issues, uh, boards meet quarterly. Uh, I think that uh, it's very important for CEOs and founders to understand how to manage their boards and what the role of the board is. Uh, the, the board is there to oversee the, uh, the activities of the company and make sure that the executive team is doing uh, a good job. Uh, the role of the board is also to help the CEO and the executive team. Um, so uh, how do board meetings go? I, I think. Um, CEOs who do it for the first time are sometimes surprised that these can be working sessions, if, uh, especially if you pick partners, true business partners, uh, you want them to dig in, to understand the unit economics, to understand your business model, understand the customers, the product. Uh, so they will ask, uh, they can ask a lot of important questions, so it's important to be prepared. To that point, my recommendation is think about how to construct the board. You know, in some ways, once the investor has made the investment, they, ha they earn the right to a board seat, so that board seat is already essentially taken. But then, as a CEO, be careful to think about who else you want on that board, and you want to have a well-rounded board. So usually, uh, there's one or two common seats. That means one is for the CEO, one is for someone else from the company who represents the common shareholder. There are also independent board members who don't represent the investors, do not represent the common, they, they represent everybody. That's why they're called independent board members. They're usually experts in the industry. They're CEOs or they represent the customer. They come, they come from the, the market, the customer base. But as a CEO, the, the more rounded the board is, the, board is, the, the, the more the uh, complementary the set of skills around the table are, the more helpful that board is to the CEO. Because in the end of the day, we all have the same goal to build a, build a big company and solve problems. Um, so yeah, so I think uh, uh, not a lot of thought goes into that initially, and only later CEOs find out that that's a, actually a, a really strategic decision that needs to be made early on because uh, these things have consequences.
Would you, what was your experience? I mean, you, you, you were on the other side as a CEO. How did you think about building the board? Was that something that you took the time initially to? I, I thought it's the wine and dine experience and then figured out we could make it more useful. And that, that, that's the composition that we tried to build uh, over time to really bring in people who have uh, specific pockets of knowledge that we don't necessarily have exactly. in the company in order to one help the CEO and then help the members of the management team. If you're weak in finance, get a finance guy on the board. If you're weak in product, Correct, exactly. get a product guy. That's, uh, That's right. why we invited Boggy and he was kind enough to uh, join our board. And he helped a lot, really shape that because we didn't know where to start. And that's one of the reasons why I personally advocate even to uh, very small companies to start thinking about a board, whether it has the authority of a formal right. board of directors or it's just an advisory board, but surround yourself with a few good people that can provide you a second opinion, which can give you guidance uh, where, where you don't know enough. Exactly. And there's always things that we don't know enough. We exactly. just have to be honest. I mean, I think that, uh, and more broadly speaking, mentorship is a very, very important aspect of, uh, I think, uh, growth, personal growth and professional growth. Uh, I think I encourage everyone to have a mentor, whether you're starting a company, whether you're already working in a company in a certain functional area. We all need advice, we all need yeah. uh, feedback. And I think especially important for a CEO because it can be, as I mentioned yesterday, it can be a very lonely place. So having someone on the outside that has gone through it, that has seen it, done it well, whose values are aligned with yours, that's very, very important. People have different styles, they have different values. So it's really important that your mentors are people that share your values so that the advice they give you is very consistent with your moral compass. So it's very consistent with what you believe to be right and, and wrong. So finding those mentors is critical to your personal success. It's critical to the company's success. So I believe you should not only find mentors for yourself, but as CEOs, you should also encourage the executives in your company to have mentors. I, I just want to ask you a provocative question as I was listening to you. I thought today was going to be the easy Would you main invest? stage conversation. No. I had to surprise you. Uh, <laughs> would you invest in a company where you see the potential of an absolutely amazing return? One which could, say, save the fund, but at the same time, you're completely unsure about the moral compass of the CEO and the team. No, I, I wouldn't. I mean, for me, that's not, uh, it's not, it's not even a, a difficult question to answer. Uh, I think there are a lot of opportunities to um, get good returns. And I don't think uh, any one of us should feel that we're ever in a position where we have no choice but to compromise our values. Uh, I strongly believe that um, living consistent with our values is one of the best ways to live in peace. Uh, and harmony with ourselves and those around us. So um, uh, I would never invest in someone that I don't think shares my, my values and my beliefs. Uh, I think that uh, that person uh, potentially could find another investor and likewise I can find someone that is more consistent with my view of the world. Uh, for example, even in our agreements as a fund, um, we do not invest in pornography, we do not invest in uh, tobacco businesses, we do not invest in uh, um, uh, other questionable or more yeah. controversial, let's say, more controversial you markets. Can be in very, you can be in conventional stuff and have really bad value system. That too, that exactly, exactly. I want to ask you, uh, speaking of values, we, we often preoccupy ourselves with the valley and we want to replicate uh, everything uh, from the valley here. What, one is, what do you think makes the, the valley so, so special in terms of um, people, values, etc., which is essentially yeah. what we have to build here and then uh, the second part would be, what do you think is missing here, the way you see mm -hmm. it? Because you have an outsider's perspective. It would be great to get your pers uh, view on yeah. sure. are we going in the right direction or not? Well, I think that's an important question because a lot of other places are trying to replicate the valley and there are groups uh, whose purpose and goal is to do that, to help other geographies replicate the important things that the Valley does. I, I think one of the reasons the Valley is so special uh, and it works so well for the most part is because it's a complete ecosystem. Um, Stanford, Berkeley are sources of talent, uh, engineers, 
uh, executives. Uh, the, uh, there is an executive education program there as well. Then uh, uh, there are the, the baby startups uh, that are started typically by the uh, often by, by by young entrepreneurs. Then there are the experienced, the big companies that have already gone through that, where these small companies can go recruit talent, experienced talent, which is usually the, the thing they need. Then you have the investors, the variety of investors, the seed stage investors that back pre product market fit companies, as well as the growth investors that write $100 million checks. You have the investment bankers, the M&A bankers, you have the legal help. So it is a complete ecosystem. Uh, very few other places have that, uh, that completeness of the, uh, uh, of the ecosystem and the symbiosis that comes from it. Um, I think that in Bulgaria, one of the things that we do so well is, uh, I, I think we have really strong engineering talent. We can solve very difficult technical problems. And I think that's an asset that we should try to emphasize and that we should try to um, use as we think about the companies we start. That's where we really differentiate. I think that the areas for uh, development that I would uh, point out to are uh, primarily a result of the, of the fact that this ecosystem is so young. So we need more successes like Telerik. We need more people like Vasco with that experience, uh, ex uh, experienced executives that know how to build companies and recruit talent that have gone through the, the difficult times and the easy times. And uh, I think with some patience, we'll get there. I think, I think it takes patience, but I think it takes also group work. And I know you're and very trust. passionate about and group trust. work and trust. Yes, I think everybody needs to pitch in. Another thing that I find to be so good about the Valley is that people genuinely like to help each other. It's, it's very rare that you'll be turned down for a meeting by pretty much anybody. Um, there are ideas are exchanged all the time. Very rarely do people hold uh, their ideas very close to themselves and not share them or their knowledge. Uh, people take pride in helping others. And I think that if that we, if we have that as a guiding principle, as one of our values here, that um, while we're growing, we help the person next to us to also grow. Uh, and we pass, how did you say it? We pass the, you know, we pass the lessons down, downstream. Then I think we all benefit, and then instead of having um, linear growth, we start having, we start seeing exponential growth because we get leverage from the learnings of this entire community. So the morale of the story, because we ran out of time, is work together, be a little bit uh, less unselfish, uh, and with enough patience yeah. uh, and with connectivity between all the stakeholders and hard work. We'll get there. Exactly. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you, guys. Duffy, thank you so thank much. Thank you. And happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs>